Welcome to the Roma Phenomenal Lady Show. Actor, director, and disability rights activist Christopher Reeve once said, a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. Our guest today is a woman who knows all about persevering and enduring in the face of obstacles. She is none other than Frida Bedway, a disability rights activist, author, and founder and CEO of Bite the Bit. This is The PL Show, brought to you by Roma Insecticide Spray and Mosquito Coil, Roma Intuntu Master, and Feco Spray Starch, Look Sharp. Before we head out to the break, I would like to welcome all of our faithful viewers to this brand new season of The Phenomenal Lady Show, and extend my warm thanks and gratitude for all of your support in the past few months. As your host, I've been blessed to have won Discovery of the Year at the just ended Golden Creative Arts Awards. Thank you so much for watching the PL show, and we'll be right back after this break. Should you rumor to me? I told you, Master, I'm a year to my mother. Roma insecticide spray at that Roma. Enter friend, enter tia, make a chair. No way! You make a look and don't come back to cry and fan them. I'm also a pussy. Roma insecticide spray and mosquito cream. I'm out there with a shout. Roma and cry! Roma and don't come master. Feco spray starch. Majimo point. Rachi, pause. When you water and brand amount of the moon, I feel you in your spray starch, Papa. On your particles be our water, no wrinkles, smooth iron. Yes, Sean, Papa. Feco spray starch. Me here perfume. As a guy. Feco spray starch. Look sharp. Look sharp. Look sharp. Welcome to the Roma Phenomenal Lady Show. Our show, as always, is brought to you by Roma Insecticide Spray and Mosquito Coil, Roma Intumtum Master, and Feco Spray Starch, Look Sharp. Our guest this week is Farida Bedwe, author and former founder and CEO of Logisil, a financial technology company who is currently the founder and CEO of Bite the Bits. Welcome to the show, Farida. Thank you for having me. We're so happy to have you on the show today. Now, your story is one of perseverance and innovation. There aren't a lot of women in this country or on the continent who are involved in STEAM or STEM. And you have created something quite magnificent. Can you tell us a bit about your early childhood and how that leading into your school life? Because I know you were homeschooled until you were 12 and how that inspired you and led you to a field in computer science. As you rightly said, I was born in Lagos, and um, shortly, shortly after I was born, my dad got a job with the, with the UNDP, so he was posted to the Commonwealth of Dominica, which is an island on the Caribbean. And uh, we stayed there for three and a half years, and. Then we went to the UK for a while, then we moved back to Grenada. Then after, after a couple of years there too, we finally moved, moved to Ghana. Then my mom homeschooled me until, until we finally moved back to Ghana. And a while we were here, for the first, for I think two or three years, she was still homeschooling me. Then, then my sister got a math teacher to help her with, with extra classes for mathematics. And my mom got him to, to, uh, to start teaching me. At the age of 12, so I decided that I should go to school so that mm -hmm. I could learn how to socialize with other children. Yeah. So after moving into the school system in yeah. Ghana, you discovered your love for the sciences? No. So what happened was prior to, to going into JSS1, I did a computer course. Back then, computers were now making its way into yeah. our systems and yeah. all and and even prior to that I had I had used the computer for most of my life because I, I have a problem with my handwriting yeah. so it was a way of doing routine communications yeah. 
as opposed to writing. To writing uh, yeah. I, I wrote a BC, I, I did very well. I mean, I, I could have gotten any school that I wanted. But then um, the disability and friendly terrains of the schools mm. made it very difficult for me to go to the school. So it was decided that then I should go and do a diploma in IT. Mm -hmm. So that is how, how I started um, venturing I learned into that, the field. Yeah, I learned that field, so to speak. Let's take a look <laughs> at the day in the life of Farida Bedway. Ghanaian software engineer Farida Nana Ifwa Bedwe was born in Nigeria but spent her entire early childhood in three different countries. At age nine, Farida and her family moved to Ghana where she was homeschooled until she turned 12. At an early age, her parents noticed her love for computers Farida Bedwe is the founder and CEO of Bytes the Bit, an IT consultancy and software development company focused on developing systems which generate data-driven stories. Farida is an author and a disability rights advocate and was featured on CNN's African Voices in February 2015. In October 2018, Farida teamed up with Letty Arts to author the first comic book featuring a superhero with cerebral palsy titled Kamsa. That is absolutely remarkable. Um, you are doing such great work. Do you feel as though in this current education system that people with disabilities are giving the adequate tools and accessibility in order for them to succeed in whatever venture they choose. They are not even being allowed into, into, into the, schools. the schools. I was like, if 30 years ago, two headmistresses who didn't know anything about my condition, they took a chance took, with took, me. Took a chance with me. I don't see why now they, they are not, especially now that there's a lot of advocacy around it and there, there are a lot more people talking about it. The internet is, is there, so if you want to know more you about it, you can educate to go mm -hmm. A lot of parents of children with disabilities get in touch with me. Mm -hmm. and, and some of the stories they, they tell me about trying to get the, their children into, into schools school. is very disheartening. Because some of them, the head mistress and the head master agrees the child starts the school, but then the parents of the other children do not want their children to associate with that child. What? So then they threaten to, to remove their children unless they, they remove that child with a disability from the school. Do you think that this stems from misinformation? The fact of the matter is that disability is still a very big taboo in, in this mm -hmm. part of the world. And, and until we can associate disability from spirituality mm -hmm. and all those things, we will continue to have this problem. It's expensive to be disabled. It is. Luckily for me, I, I was never on any medication, but a lot of children with my condition... They require medication. Yeah, they require medication. And they, they have convulsions and, so and They have to, to take medication that will stop those convulsions. We, we have all the, the, these, these assistive these devices that we need, walkers. Mm -hmm. Crutches, all those things. How, how, how are the parents supposed to afford those things? We, we, we can't solve, solve, solve the whole problem. But we can solve bits and pieces of the mm -hmm. problem. Let's make the schools accessible. Yes. So that the children with physical disabilities can access the school. I mentioned very briefly that you were an author. You penned the definition of a miracle. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that book? I, I, I was actually frustrated about the misconception of, mm -hmm. of disability and the way people were always inviting me for, for prayer meetings, for prayer camps, mm -hmm. for healing sessions and all. So I wrote this book to let people know how we feel when we are being forced to go for prayers yeah. and all those things, uh, as well as to, to let people know that at the end of the day, you, you may have a disability, but you're just like everybody else. That's incredible. Yeah. But you're currently the founder and CEO yes, of, of Bite Fit. Yeah. It's a new um, 
company that that I just set up and mm -hmm. it's going to be focused on and building systems that promote data capture, data analysis, because what I've realized is that that is one thing we lack in this part of the world. Mm. If I ask you how, how many disabled people do we have in the country, you don't I know. I wouldn't be able to even find yeah. the figures. Yeah. I'm sure the people at home might be wondering how exactly one might go about creating a database. Our statistic development is very poor. That it's very hard to find any statistics on, on anything. <laughs> but how how do you think you're going to go about creating this, and what are some of the challenges you might face along so, the way? Um, the most important thing, one is, is regardless of, of what kind of pro project you are doing, is to get stakeholder involvement mm -hmm. and and to get people to buy into what you are doing doing with them, otherwise it will not succeed. So whatever solution that I'm coming up with, I'm, I'm making sure that I involve the people who are going to use the data mm -hmm. and, and, and the people whose data is, is going to be collected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I will just provide the, the technology for mm -hmm. it. And But my main focus is, is creating a simple platform that they can use to capture the data and I do a lot of I, I analytics with the data mm -hmm. for them. I did something for the owner of Ovation magazine. Oh, Dele Mamoudi. Yeah, yeah Dele Mamoudi oh. in Nigeria. He has a palliative scheme mm -hmm. where, which he started last year in response to the downturn of, of economic activities in Nigeria mm -hmm. as a result of COVID. Yeah. So he started asking people randomly for their bank account numbers so, so that he could um, give them some money. So, so they were tweeting it to him and mm -hmm. I thought, no, this is not a very sustainable yeah. way of doing it. So I built a system for him and, and we broke it down state by state, city by city, male, female, age range, what, what they want the money for sure. mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, so for once, we were able to distribute the money to every single state in Nigeria. Incredible. This is truly riveting stuff. Yeah. Our guest today is Farida Bedway, author and CEO and founder of Bite the Bits. Our show, as always, is brought to you by Roma Insecticide Spray and Mosquito Coil, Roma in Tum Tum Master. Use Roma for the effective killing of crawling and flying insect leaving a pleasant fragrance in your room. Roma in Tim Tim Master. We'll be right back after this break. Should you Roma to me? I told Tom Master, a bay year to my number. She saw my dad. Roma insecticide spray at that Roma. Interfred, Entatia, make it her. No way. You make no and don't come back or crown fan. I'm also a poo see. Roma insecticide spray and mosquito cream. Emma, who dare we a show? Roma, don't cry. Roma and Tonto Master. Papa, hey, Yena, Yena. Maketiano, why are you home? Oh! Tum, 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 Welcome back to the Phenomenal Lady Show. As always, our show is brought to you by Feco Spray Starch. Feco for crisp, sharp looking clothes that have you stepping out in style. Feco Spray Starch, look sharp. We need to talk about your incredible creation of what is now one of my favorite superheroes, Kamza. Can you tell us a bit about Kamza and the inspiration behind her? So after Black Panther came out in 2018, and I realized how much it was resonating with people. And 
I mean, growing up, I, I love superheroes. I mean, I, I was a tomboy. I love Transformers. I loved all those He-Man, Shira, all those mm -hmm. superheroes. But there was nobody who represented me in that in that world. Yeah. So what happened was I went for a conference in Kigali, and the CEO of Lati Arts was also there. We have met with each other casually, but we have never really started had a conversation mm -hmm. and all. So after my speaking engagement, I went to sit in his because he was doing a workshop on on character formation for, for for cartoons and all. So I had a conversation with him and I told him that I have this, this idea and I'd like to pursue it. He said, oh, but if, if you like it, we'll draw it. So that is how comes that came, came to be. And then, believe me, the response has been phenomenal. I mean, yeah. when I was first launched in 2018, all over the world, the Bar Policy Association were gotten in touch with me because they were like, yes, we feel represented now. Yes. And that for me is it's, it's like the, the ultimate when it comes to Super Yeah. Because, because as, as African women... We are part, already superheroes. Yeah, we are, we are not... We are, we are, we are highly underrepresented. Yeah. I mean, if it were not for, for Black Panther coming up with those um, with those um, Okoye and all those people, that that no yeah, 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 we have no representation. So can't that not just represent people with a black person, but represent African women yes. with, and in the superhero world too. It's clear that Kamza was born out of a lot of love and understanding. You yourself was diagnosed with cerebral palsy a year after you were born at a time when there wasn't a lot of education, there wasn't a lot of accessibility for somebody with your condition. How did your family handle the diagnosis? My mother told me that when she was told, I was diagnosed in the UK because I wasn't meeting the, the developmental milestones. I, I have an older sister, so she knew what to expect. Mm -hmm at each stage in a baby's life and I was meeting them. So she took me to the UK and the famous children's hospital, the great Ormond's children's hospital, and they did a brain scan and they saw it. And she said when she was told, I think she cried a little. Then then after that, they told her that, look, the a part of the brain is damaged, but the other part is damaged. And, and that part can be trained to um, to do things that, that the other part cannot do or something. She did physiotherapy with me, she did she homeschooled me and and it's like she, she you really didn't know what to expect back up and surprising her. And and it's like every milestone that I got to, mm -hmm. she was like, Okay, if she can do this, then let's try it. I mean because by the age of three I was reading. And I mean she was like, Oh, okay. So if she can read then then, then, then that means we can, I, I can do schoolwork with her. I, I know that I'm incredibly blessed to have a mother like her because mm -hmm. if, if not, I'd probably be like, like, like most of the other children with her palsy because I, I could not talk. I mean, I had to go for speech therapy mm -hmm. before I was able to talk. And, <laughs> and I remember she, she used to complain to my grandmother when I was able to talk. Now I'm talking too much. <laughs> and, and my grandmother was like, you 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 are you, 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 you complaining what you're talking. You've been went to what what they got yeah. her therapy to talk, and now you're complaining that you're talking too much. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. At the age of twelve, you transitioned from this very loving and facilitating environment yeah. with your mother and the tutors that yeah. you had at home into a proper educational system that was probably not as equipped or as accepting or as loving. What was that like? And I went to Saito. It wasn't was, was even, um, was even a private school. Oh, oh. my goodness. Yeah. That must have been a complete yeah, it's, shock. Because it's, it's, it's actually very good for me. Because mm. I met such great people. And, yes. and I realized that, I mean, children don't, don't discriminate. It's adults they don't. Who let their, their preconceived Prejudices mm -hmm. 
influence their, their, children. their interactions with people who are different from them. I remember walking in, 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 into the classroom, my, my mother was holding me. I sat down, the, the teacher said, said, said that, hey, this is Farida. Um, she needs help moving around to help her. And that was it. I mean, I, I, had, I had about five or six girls uh, who, who would always help me if I want to go to the bathroom, they would hold my hand to take me to the bathroom. If yeah. I want to go to, to, to eat, they, they, they'll take me to go and eat. When my mother is late to pick me up, they will wait behind with me and all. And I mean, these, these were children who had never even seen, seen anybody with cerebral palsy before. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that, uh, so the, the most common disability was polio. So mm -hmm. they didn't know of any condition like cerebral palsy, but yeah. they were so accepted. It is the adults. We, yeah. we, we are the problem, not the children. That's just just leave, leave the children to play with, with their with their classmates mm -hmm. with disabilities. And, and you realize that the children who 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 associate with children with disabilities grow up more open minded. Yeah, they don't have any and they are, yeah, yeah. And, and they are more and, empathetic. Yes. Because they they know that people are different and there are some people who need who need extra attention and all. Now you talked about being welcomed by your peers, but as an adult working in such incredible fields in technology you've also been wel welcomed onto various boards you're on the board of the national communication authority and you're also on the board of share care ghana which is an ngo can you tell us a little bit about your role in both of these boards so the the national communication authority was from 2014 to 2016 i believe joint to join former president mm -hmm. Mohammed. Regime. It was it was quite an quite an an experience. I got to know a lot about the public service mm -hmm. and how how it works, and it made me realize that things are not as as, as smooth as, as we think it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, those of us who sit uh, outside and complain a lot, it's, it's not that easy mm -hmm. when you are in the, in the midst of uh, it. In the midst. Now, in addition to being on many of these boards, you have over the years accomplished many great feats and been given multiple awards for your hard work. Can you tell us a, a bit about these awards? Honestly, I don't remember most of the awards that we did. I mean, I remember the last time, I, I'm not kidding, the last time I, I <laughs> I was updating my feet. I had to Google my, myself. You had to Google <laughs> your accomplishments. Yeah, I don't appreciate the awards. I appreciate no, no, every single course. award that I get. But it's like most of them, I feel that I'm just being awarded for living my life. Do you feel as though the recognition that comes from these awards and these um, accomplishments that come with the work that you do mm -hmm. brings more? Um, awareness to people think, with disabilities. I think it does. I think it does. And that is, is why I do what I do. I mm. mean, that is why, because I, I'm not somebody who likes to be in the limelight at all. I like, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a software developer. So, you know, as we like to be alone, yes. you know, coding behind our machine coding and all. But, but I realize that when I come and I talk about these things, a child sitting somewhere with a disability may get the an opportunity yeah. in life. And like be inspired I remember, by it. I remember when soon after the CNN interview came came out, I went to, to, to Lagos for a conference. When I was coming back, I met this lady at the airport who told me that she watched me on TV yeah. and she and, and her sister had a child with, with a disability. And as soon as she watched me, she, she went and told the sister to take the child to school yeah. because, because she realized that there was hope for the child. So, and, and it made everything that I've that done worthwhile. So, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Now, Farida, you're an extremely busy woman. Yeah. I mean, you are, you've got a startup currently. And I also, I also host, host the show yes. called The Mystifying Disabilities. You do, you do. Where I interview other people with disabilities and those in the, in, in the disability space who, who do stuff with assistive technology and stuff to, to raise awareness for, 
for disability. For disability. The various kinds of disability. So here at the Phenomenal Lady, our sponsors would like to Thank extend so their much. gratitude not only for being here with us today, but also for the incredible work that you do. You so so we've got we've got everything. We've got the Sasso spray. We've got Roma. We've got the mosquito coils. Now Sasso and Roma are actually the same product. Mm -hmm. They just have different fragrances. We're sending you home with a ton of them Thank because you. we want to make sure that you stay healthy and that you don't get malaria. <laughs> And you can continue fighting the good fight and doing all of this incredible work. You. Before you leave us today, I would like to know in your own words who you believe a phenomenal lady is. I think almost every African woman is a phenomenal lady because the, the, the hassle that we go through to, to, to survive in this environment and it's not, it's not for the, for the weak heart. No. And I think it's about time we also, I mean, acknowledge what they do mm -hmm. and, and give them the recognition that, that they deserve. There might be parents out there who might, due to the stigma surrounding disability, be keeping their children at home, mm -hmm. preventing them from exploring education or a trait or their talents that may be hidden beneath the surface. What advice or words of wisdom would you have for these people watching at home? For the parents, I mean, I know that it's tough. I know that especially in, in this environment where you don't get much support from, 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 the, from, from the government or from, from the from society. It's really difficult, but um, I also believe that, that, your, that children with disabilities are capable of a lot more mm -hmm. than, than we are giving them credit for. So if there are therapies and things that need to be done to get them to that level, persevere and continue. It's not something that, that happens overnight. I mean, sometimes you do therapies for, for, for four or five years, you don't see any difference. But you have to, con to continue because one day you see a, slight, a small difference, a, a small improvement that will make everything worthwhile. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much Thank you for, for being on the show me. today. We really, me. really yeah. appreciate it. This has been the Roma Phenomenal Lady Show brought to you by Roma Insecticide Spray and Mosquito Coil, Roma in Tum Tum Master and Feco Spray Start Look Sharp. Remember, that we all live on some degree with a disability, be it mental, physical, emotional, learning or otherwise. It will do us all some good to come from a place of empathy and understanding, to look to our fellow man and see that we're all worthy of being here. And as such, we should make life more accessible for everyone around us. Thank you so much for joining us on this first episode of the new season. This has been the Roma Phenomenal Lady Show. My name is Princess Fithia Nkrumah and I've been your host. See you same time next week. So much better than good. The world is changing. Too much bad, no good.